Hello, this is Cathy Cassidy and this is Sunday Book Club and as promised this week I said that I would share some reader advice for how to get through lockdown because I know that a lot of my readers and a lot of people watching Sunday Book Club at the moment are in lockdown. In Wales we are still in lockdown although freedom is just about in sight for a while anyway. I know that England is, is in lockdown. I know that France, my readers in France are, and I think as, as the winter kind of carries on, more and more of us, we're gonna be in and out of restrictions. So any advice is really welcome. And um, I know that Lily Lost and a lot of um, the people commenting on Sunday Book Club had asked for advice to help. Um, and Francesca also, um, a regular Sunday Book Club person had some really good advice. Her advice, you know, included get out in nature, which is something I try to do every day. I try and go and get myself a walk along the seafront, which I absolutely love. Um, I had to stop for a few weeks after after being poorly um, a couple of weeks ago, and I really, really missed that. I missed being able to get out in the fresh air more than almost anything else. So it's something that I've started up again that's making a real difference to me. Francesca also suggested yoga as being really helpful. And funnily enough, yoga was something I had begun to put into my routine the week before I got poorly. And every, every evening before I went to bed, I would do kind of half an hour, just a short routine of yoga and I was loving it. And then I got ill and that routine has not come back. So it's definitely something I would really like to do. Um, just because it's a different way of winding down, it's a way of stretching and kind of, um, I don't know, I know that it's good for me. So yoga is something I'm definitely gonna try really hard to put into my routine. Um, another thing that Francesca recommended was writing in a journal. And I love the idea of that. Um, long ago when I was an art student, I used to keep a little diary sketchbook and I'd put down anything that happened and my feelings and my thoughts and so on. I'd draw things, stick things in. I love the idea of a journal and it's something maybe that I might want to start again because there have never really been times quite like these and I think they're well worth recording. It'd be something to look back on. And, and it's a, a journal is something that's just for you. So you can write sad things, happy things, angry things, whatever you want. And it's it's safe because it's just for your eyes only. And Francesca's last piece of advice was um, to try to remember or to try and write down or note, if nothing else, 10 things that you're grateful for every day. And I love the idea of this. I very rarely get to 10 things, but... Um, yeah, I, I try to take note of the things that make me happy each day. And some of my, currently, some of my happy things are walking along the seafront. And um, every day I try to look out for different kinds of wildlife or different um, birds, really. Some days we see the heron. Heron's my very favourite bird, so I love it when we see the heron in the sea trying to, trying to fish for it, his or her breakfast. Some days, if we're really lucky, we, saw, we see a bird called an egret which is white and a little bit heron-like. It's got a really long neck and a long beak. And you would expect to see it somewhere really exotic, like, you know, Egypt or Sri Lanka or somewhere. But no, it's here in North Wales, again, looking for fish for breakfast. So I love that. And there is another bird that we noticed a few weeks ago, um, a very small, elegant and um, very quick bird that also fishes for its breakfast or its supper. Um, and it's really unusual, really beautiful. And when it goes under the water in search of fish, it can stay under for quite a long time. And it's called a grebe. It's got a, like a kind of little punk haircut. Uh, yeah, like a bit of a Mohican. So I love looking out for, for those birds. Kitchen dancing is um, one of my happy things. If I'm feeling a bit low, I'll, I'll look for one of my favorite songs and do a bit of dancing around the house. My animals, um, my dog Finn and my dog uh, Ziggy and also the tortoise Mary Shelley are all good things for me, all, always in every day. They make me happy. And just lately, now that we're into winter, the smell of, of wood smoke is joining those things. And sometimes out of the blue, just from nowhere at all, 
awesome, lovely things happen that make you smile. And, you know, they're, they're well worth noting too. And this week, some gorgeous, gorgeous things happened. Um, I got through the post some unexpected gifts. It's not my birthday. There's no reason for any of this. Um, one of the things that I got, a little parcel from um, a girl called Holly, who used to read my books and is now grown up and, and just uh, totally going about being awesome in her own way. And she's very artistic. And one of the things she does is make badges. And she sent me a little parcel with lots of beautiful badges she's designed in. But one of them, this one, I just love it. I love it. I would love to send this to everybody on Sunday Book Club because it's true and everybody I know, basically. So imagine getting that through the post. And it wasn't just badges. There was also a gorgeous bar of vegan chocolate and um, a fantastic little prayer flag thing um, on, on a, a little banner, I suppose, with a quote by the author Mary Shelley. Um, a very inspiring quote, and I love it. And I've put it upstairs in um, my tortoise, Mary Shelley's enclosure, so she can uh, kind of bask underneath the wisdom of, of her namesake every day. So thank you, Holly, you are awesome. And then another amazing thing happened because um, with a friend on Facebook, I'd been having a discussion about how the dark nights and the short days were starting to get me down. And then through the post, came a parcel of fairy lights, battery operated, because I'd been saying, oh, I love fairy lights and I'd love to have some in my porch, but we've got no electricity in the porch. Now I can have fairy lights in my porch and it will feel like Christmas all the time. And that is just the loveliest, loveliest, most thoughtful present. Thank you, Ali. Fantastic. And uh, then today, an even more gorgeous thing, um, a beautiful book from my French publisher, um, a beautiful picture book, and it's written by one of my favourite uh, friends and authors in France, Gaël Aymon, um, and it's actually the story of Sleeping Beauty. But it's, um, I don't know, it's not even going to be possible to show you, but it's got cutouts all the way through it. Just the most stunning, stunning, beautiful I don't know if this will ever be translated into English, but it really, really should be because beautiful artwork, but also fantastic cutouts. Um, if I can show you this and how that is all a paper cut. So how cool. And um, yeah, it's called La Belle au Bois Dormant, um, but it's Sleeping Beauty, I guess. And yeah, um, the lovely Melanie and Gail the author got together and because I'd admired it when I saw it was published on Facebook, they've sent me a copy and it's just made me so happy. So, pour mes lectrices français, cet livre est très, très joli et incroyable. J'aime cela. Non, j'adore. Um, merci beaucoup, Mélanie et Gaëlle. So, um, yeah, what else? When we're talking about things that we can put into our routine to help with the lockdown, I think be kind to yourself as well. I mentioned that my yoga routine kind of fell through after being poorly. I've not managed to get that back. Another thing I was doing before I got ill, um, I was trying to learn Welsh and I'd, I'd bought a kind of online thing to help me learn to speak Welsh. Then I got ill. I missed two weeks of lessons and now I'm completely out of my depth, completely overwhelmed and who knows what will happen. I will probably never learn to speak Welsh now. Um, languages is not is not my strong point, as all my French readers already know. But um, I would like to get back to it at some point. But it made me think, actually, do not beat yourself up um, about trying to stick to a particular routine or trying to live up to things that might be a little bit beyond you at the moment, because at the moment, I think Welsh is just one thing too many for me to manage. Um, even if it's just getting out of bed, getting dressed, getting washed, that's fine. If that's what you're doing today, that is absolutely fine. Be kind to yourself. Um, there are lots of friends of mine who are using lockdown to be creative, doing things like painting and drawing, colouring, to doing things like crafting and knitting and weaving, learning macrame, doing gardening, growing flowers and vegetables and fruit, 
maybe doing meditation with some of the free apps that you can get online. All of those things are fantastic, but do not push yourself too far. Don't compare yourself to other people. Look for something that makes you happy and that's fine. That's all that matters. So um, I had a few final shout outs apart from the people that I've mentioned already. Um, I wanted to welcome some new subscribers to the YouTube channel and they are Liberty and Idea, Vintage Rosette, Amshka and Emily. And I know there will be more, but some people have a privacy settings setting when they've um, subscribed and I can't always see everybody. Um, yeah, I know... Um, yeah, I think I think it's fantastic. So, yes, um, apart from that, some shout outs to my friends. And in particular, I wanted to mention um, my best friend, Helen, who's a teacher and all teachers who are working through this very difficult time. And all of who all of you who do the very absolute best that you can for your students. And please, all teachers everywhere, know that you are appreciated and that we see what you're doing and we see how hard you're working. And then I have a lovely friend, Sheena, and she and her husband, Pete, have been, she, she's a silversmith, and um, they've been struggling to make the roof of their workshop um, watertight. And uh, that made me think, so hi, Sheena and Pete, but also wanted to, wanted to say, for all small businesses, whatever you might be, you know, whether you're a craft business like Sheena and Pete's or whether you're um, in hospitality, in catering, in, you know, whatever it might be, whatever, we know how hard things are for you at the moment and you're soldiering on in spite of all the challenges. So, um, yeah, just keep going because this can't last forever. It really can't. And then another Another shout out is for um, one of my readers, Deborah. She's one of my older readers. She was absolutely passionate about my books when she was a teenager. And um, she is now grown up and at university in Czech Republic studying medicine. And so hi all the way in Czech Republic, Deborah, but also hi to all of my older readers who are students, who are at university, who are stuck in halls of residence or shared houses. Um, in lockdown and unable to even go into university and learn in the usual way, this is not what uni or college or whatever is meant to be like. And I understand how hard it is for you. And I see the struggles that you're going through. It, you know, it's really, really hard. And yeah, it's so, so easy for the media to turn and, and blame students and say that they're not being careful enough that is so, so unfair. You're doing an amazing job at a time that is incredibly, incredibly hard. Um, just hang on in there and please know that it can't go on forever. And I so hope you get to go home for Christmas. Yeah, and be with your families again. So um, yeah, those are my main shout outs to teachers, to crafters and small businesses and to students. And of course, to parents, to young people, to children everywhere. I mean, I've had I've had emails and letters the last couple of weeks from kids who are going to school and so anxious that maybe they'll bring, um, you know, the virus back to their family and make somebody poorly. The, the levels of anxiety at the moment are quite high. So um, yeah, what can we do? How can we help? And there isn't an awful lot that I can do, but one thing I thought I could do is um, something that I did in the spring and maybe read some chapters of a book over the next few weeks, because in these dark nights and cold days, maybe it would really help. So um, a couple of a couple of Sunday Book Club people had ideas. Nathini wanted me to read Ginger Snaps and Apple Simpson asked for either Angel Cake or Ginger Snaps. And I've actually decided um, that I'm going to read Angel Cake and I'm going to be starting that from tomorrow. So, um, yeah, the first chapter will be online tomorrow at, from about eight o'clock and there will be a special uh, YouTube list for Angel Cake. So you should never need to miss a copy or, or an episode rather. And um, if anybody would like to buy a book to read along, 
um, you can, this is likely to be what it looks like now, this is the newer cover, and you can buy a copy as ebook for, format, or you can buy it online from any of the online suppliers like ukbookshop.org, maybe Amazon or waterstones.com, or buy it online from your local indie bookshop. Um, and I've chosen this book because it looks at several issues that I think are really important, things like bullying and being on the edge of things and being a bit of an outsider for whatever reason. And it's about um, a girl who comes from Poland and settles in the UK, in Liverpool, in fact, and finds it quite hard to settle in to begin with, but gradually things do get easier. So I'm really, really hoping that you're going to enjoy it. If you could do one thing for me, spread the word about the chapters that are coming. Tell a friend, maybe ask them to subscribe and listen in. Tell a school, tell a teacher. The chapters are going to be great for years five or six or seven or eight in England and Wales, maybe P5, six, seven in Scotland or S1, of course. And there is no upper limit. Um, you know, I'd say from nine to 99, um, you might like this. There's stuff that lots and lots of people can identify with um, and lots of talking point stuff. So I'm going to actually keep the Sunday Book Club going um, I'm only going to read a chapter from Angel Cake on weekdays and on Sunday we'll discuss um, some of the things that have come up in the story. So you can ask me and we can talk about inspiration or why I'm writing about certain things. Because my character, when she first comes, she's not, yeah, she's not always the most sympathetic or the kindest about what's going on around her, but she does learn really quickly and change. So I think it's quite interesting in, in you know, how we react to hard times. Um, I think that's just about it. That is, um, I wanted to tell you about the new book. Just trying to see, have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Um, so I will see you hopefully tomorrow morning for chapter one of Angel Cake. There will be more things in store. I'm thinking of doing a signed book competition or giveaway um, before Christmas and maybe one for France as well. Um, so yeah, do remember to check in next week for Sunday Book Club and please do check in from tomorrow morning for the first chapter of Angel Cake and that will take us pretty much up to Christmas and that's the main reason I've chosen Angel Cake because it is a book which has, a, a it builds up to a big Christmas theme. So I'm hoping you'll like it. And uh, yeah, you'll probably see today I've kind of chosen a different corner of my house to, to talk to you from. I'm in a corner of the living room and you can see some of my favourite things, also things that make me happy, are behind me. Um, there's a beautiful print of a Welsh, a Welsh saint carrying a hare um, and that I absolutely love. There is a Jackie Morris original painting, a beautiful watercolour of, of uh, the Fox King and, and the Snow, the Winter Queen behind me, just above my head. And you can't see it properly because the, the light is reflecting off the glass. Ah! Um, and some other prints just, just to the side. A lovely book called Folk, again, with fantastic kind of folk stories and, and dark fairy tale kind of things, recommended by fellow author uh, Karen McCombie, which I love. And in the middle, we've got the lovely book, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse um, by Charlie Maxey, which was given to me at Christmas by my lovely friend Jenny um, and which I keep there because I love looking at it and I love to be able to pick it up and look at it for inspiration. So a book I definitely recommend. And then next to it, Bird Book, which is great because just out of the window to the other side, um, you can see our bird feeders. We've got kind of like a, a wigwam with bird feeders hanging off it. And uh, that's, that bird book is great because this morning we saw a goldfinch. You know, how, how sad am I getting all excited by the birds on the bird feeder, but I am. So that is it for today. Probably a, an ultra long Sunday book club, um, but the, the chapters are going to be quite short. So there will be room, hopefully, in every day for you to manage to fit one of those chapters in. In the meantime, please take care. Take that opportunity to escape into a story, um, to leave your troubles behind and um, live a different life, live through the characters of my book, Angel Cake. And uh, yeah, I will see you next week and we'll discuss some of the things in the story then. Don't forget to leave your comments on the YouTube channel and your questions. 
Meanwhile, stay safe, take care and keep smiling. Bye bye.